It is Michigan Football Overreaction Sunday. I want to remind you guys, make sure you subscribe because we're going to have wall-to-wall coverage. Not just videos. Maybe just put out a YouTube short or two. Also, uh, that YouTube community tab, just stats, information. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Also, send it to a friend, youtube.com slash Michigan TV. Any friend that wants the absolute latest news, rumors, everything you need to know about this program, this game, and uh, you know what is going on around Jim Harbaugh's program, including... Blake Corum and his injury, right? Uh, after the game and into Sunday morning now, we've gotten word that uh, Jim Harbaugh said yesterday after the game that it's not a structural injury. Now, what does that mean? Uh, I've interpreted that as it is not a tear or it's not uh, anything like an ACL injury, anything like that. Um, and the early word, and this isn't confirmed by the program yet, this is just talking to people in and around uh, the situation, is that it is a severe bruising slash hyperextension of uh of uh, the knee. Now that has made people be out for as little as 24 hours from what I've heard. And others have speculated that that's an issue injury that uh, could last up to one month. So uh, hopefully it's one of the 24 hours or certainly, you know, four, three, four, five days and Blake Corum can be on the field fully healthy, hundred percent to beat Ohio state. Again, we are going to take uh, all kinds of looks at uh, yesterday's game and looking forward to Ohio State game. Some really interesting stats, nuggets of information, and my takeaways on the offense and what Michigan needs to do next week. It is the Michigan Football Report by Chat Sports coming up right now. We are presented by Manscaped, folks. Manscaped is a great gift for the holiday season, so make sure you Tell your uh, loved ones they want to hook you up. You go to manscaped.com, use promo code GOBLUE for the best male grooming products in the game. Or hell, uh, get some for yourself this holiday season. All right, it is Michigan football overreaction Sunday. We're going to talk about a lot of things. I've got five or so overreactions, kind of a mix of what I've seen from you guys out there on social media, text, etc. My phone was blowing up last night, all kinds of people with takes on this game. And then uh, mixing in a little bit of mine overall. But the number one number one overreaction, and this more is one of mine, is still 11 and 0, right? And I think that's something to be proud of, be happy about. And um, look, yesterday was game was the first time Michigan really had a chance to lose this entire season. That is incredibly rare uh, in the history of this program. I'm going to tell you how rare it is here in a second, but I want to ask you guys this question. What was your biggest overreaction from yesterday's game? Um, just off the cuff, I, I we put these graphics together. Sometimes I don't even think about my answers until I actually get here in front of the camera. What I'm going to say is concerning about the offense with Blake Corum. That's my biggest overreaction. Um, I think it's very concerning, and maybe even you know second to that. That's the one A. The one B might even be the play calling without you know Blake Corum in the game. Like going to Isaiah Gash so much. Uh, some of the passing trees and passing routes. Uh, even end of the game when Michigan uh, had that that uh, catch overturned. Why did they pass the ball on third down? Like, what was the point of that? They almost risked an interception. It just seemed like it was uh, very, this whole program, this offense, and uh, and the coaching staff really just didn't know what to do without uh, their leader, their Heisman Trophy front runner, in my opinion, Blake Corum. What a two year run, though, as I mentioned a moment ago. Michigan is 11 and 0 for the first time in uh, back to back, or not 11 though, have 11 wins or more for the first time since the 1902. 03 season folks we're talking about 119 years until michigan has uh had back-to-back 11 plus win season so what a two-year run it's really what we've expected from jim harbaugh all along i kind of figured we have runs like this maybe back in 16 and then 17 but 17 turned out to be a bad year 18 then 19 19 turned out to be a, a bad year as well didn't even get to 11 wins in 2018 after dropping their last two ohio state and then the bowl game but I'm so glad they won yesterday's game because for me, I actually think it might have been a worse loss than Appalachian State. And you might be saying, Yoder, you're crazy, you're wild. But think about it. This storybook season, 11-0, coming off of last year's uh, 12-win season, uh, losing the game before Ohio State would have just completely destroyed the luster of next week. I think it would have deflated the fan base, deflated the team. Um, and so maybe the best output outcome here, um, assuming Blake Corum is healthy, if he's not, then you know, totally different story going to this game, but that they had some adversity, had to actually play in a tight game, which they're certainly going to have to do against Ohio State, a uh, team with equal or better talent uh, next week, and that they know how to win a game when they have to, right? This is a team that really hasn't been tested much at all this season. So maybe it's a little bit of a, a blessing in disguise, but I'm so glad they didn't lose that game last uh, last yesterday afternoon. It would have been worse for me, at least, 
than Appalachian State. What might be worse for you is if you are going down with uh, you know, a lady in your life, you guys are going to the bedroom, and you haven't kept up things below the waist, and that's where Manscaped comes in. You can get 20% off and free shipping using that promo code you see on screen, Go Blue. Uh, no spaces on that one, G-O-B-L-U-E. Manscaped's performance package, folks. You think your holiday spread is good? It's time to give thanks to Manscaped's performance package, or as I call it, the perfect package for your package. Inside the performance package, you'll find the Lawnmower 4.0, the Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer, the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, the Reviver Toner, and the Performance Boxer Briefs, which kind of are hit in the bedroom, uh, and then you know they, they come off, and even a better hit thanks to Manscaped. You get a travel bag as well that I've been using for a couple years now with Manscaped. Think of it uh, you know, as, as, the, as the holiday season for you in the bedroom. You clean up downstairs. The lady in your life or guy is going to be much happy. Um, send the link. Send the promo code to family if they're looking for a gift for you. Big time discount, 20% off and free shipping. Got to use the promo code GOBLUE. It's down in the comments and the description of today's video. Manscaped.com. Get hooked up this holiday season. A great stocking stuff or a great uh, thing to send out there. Say, hey, you want to give me a gift, etc. Go use Manscaped. Save the people in your life a little money if they're buying you a gift using promo code GOBLUE. Number two, beat Ohio State again. That's all that matters. And frankly, had Michigan lost yesterday, but beat Ohio State next week, I could live with that, actually. <laughs> so, you know, six days from now. Um, but I'm glad they didn't lose the game. But this is all that matters at this point. Beat Ohio State again. Um, I'm, I'm I'm excited for this game. I'm hoping, desperately hoping that Blake Corum is healthy, both for his future, his career, and and the uh, viability of this team going into Columbus uh, this this coming week, and with an opportunity to obviously win the Big Ten uh, East, go to the Big Ten Championship game, go to the College Football Playoff, win a national championship game. But I want you guys to like today's video, get the vibes out early. We've been doing this for two years. It's worked every single time, except for one guy who we banned from the camera, didn't the channel, didn't like the video last year, Michigan State Week, banned him, uh, but they lost, so it's all his fault. So like the video, let's not jinx it. Give me a like. Let's keep the vibes clean, good. Get the energy up for a big time game. Maybe, uh, you know, I know 2016 happened. I know 2006 happened. I know 1997 happened as well, but I think this is the biggest game in the history of the rivalry, at least in my lifetime. So let's like the video beat Ohio State again. Blake Corum's injury is the key to this entire week for Michigan. Um, as we said at the top of the show, not structural, so no ACL tear or anything like that, but hyperextended, right? You guys know as well as I do, I'm sure you've had injuries in your own life, that you could injure something and it can nag, it can you know be uh, painful and hurt and not be at 100% for weeks on end, right? Sometimes even like stubbing your toe or something like that, you know, keeps you out a couple days. So um, I'm not optimistic that he's going to be 100% healthy, but uh, I don't think Michigan can. He can play, right? He played last year against Ohio State after missing like three games prior to the Buckeyes, um, you know, uh, game last year, broke off a couple runs, including one in the third quarter that kind of got the ball rolling for Michigan to uh, to win this game. But I don't think this team, especially yesterday on offense in the second half, has proven they can win without him um, against a team like Ohio State. I mean, take a look at this stat. Blake Corm over 100 yards in the first half. The second half, right, he came in for two plays, got one five-yard carry. But Michigan only had 19 carries for 45 yards yesterday with a rotation of Isaiah Gash and uh, Taviar, Dun Taviar Dunlap and C.J. Stokes. Um, look like a bad Brady Hoke offense out there on Saturday, uh, yesterday versus Illinois. That's a, a disappointing st stat. What's even more disappointing for me is this photo. I mean, look at this. This is the fourth quarter of senior day in a tight game that you could potentially lose when you're going for a national championship and that student section is half or more empty. Michigan students, if you didn't watch yesterday, uh, my end of my video yesterday, I'll link it down in the comments and description, or just go to the channel, click on yesterday's video. Um, I went off. I'm not gonna go off again, right? I've had a had a day or so, you know, less than 20 hours to cool down. But Michigan students, you need to do better because there's very few programs that get back-to-back -back seasons like you've just had at two years of college, coming off a pandemic where you're winning, you know, Michigan's one of these schools that weren't even letting kids see each other for uh, for a year or so. And now you've got the number three football program in the country. You're going into uh, the game of the century, et cetera, this week. And you guys are leaving to what? To get out of the cold? Well, you can't handle the cold. Do better, Michigan students, because frankly, the student section yesterday was absolutely pathetic. An overreaction I'm seeing from a lot of people, and I don't think I disagree with it at all, is is J.J. McCarthy regressing as a quarterback, right? He was a great quarterback, I think, the first four or five games of this season 
when he was in there. Now, some bad competition, but some good competition as well that he looked you know, really strong on. He looks kind of lost out there. He looks afraid. Now, there's been speculation he's got a shoulder injury that's flaring up again. I haven't heard anything about that. So that might be an explanation, but I'm not saying that's true at all. But I can't figure out how he's regressing over the last month of the season. Take a look at yesterday's stats, 18 of 34, 2 of 8. Prior to week that, Nebraska, 18 of 17, 13 of 27, 15 of 25. So he was completing 77% of his passes before this last four-game stretch, folks. Now he's regressed to about a 50% completion passer, 54 of 103, 655. So he's after about 165, 170 a game there and uh, over four games and five touchdowns. Now he's not turning the ball over. Uh, that's fine. He made a couple plays uh, yesterday, um, including maybe one of the, the – more unsung plays of the day was when he uh, fumbled the ball, then picked up the fumble and uh, didn't put his knee on the ground. So these stats here, folks, are, uh, are frankly not good enough to beat Ohio State. They're not good enough to uh, win a game in the college football playoff. My take, though, on the other side, the guys catching the balls, is Ron Bellamy's wide receivers just aren't good. Um, it's the former Michigan wide receiver, Ron Bellamy himself. He moved from he was a wide receivers uh, as a player, high school football coach, Safety's coach last year, first year coaching wide receivers. I thought the wide receivers ran bad routes and just didn't play that well the last three years prior to this one with, you know, uh, Josh Gaddis, but they're worse. There's not a single playmaker on this team. Andrew Anthony looks lost out there. He can't make a play on the ball. Ronnie Bell's catching passes here and there, but he's not a game breaker by any means. He's, he's a good possession receiver. Um, Cornelius Johnson, I don't know what we're getting from him. Um, Roman Wilson, like there is not a single playmaker in this wide receiver group. I can make an argument that Colson Loveland might be Michigan's most uh, biggest downfield threat uh, to make any uh, any sort of plays, but um, no one's a playmaker, and I think Ron Bellamy's really got to figure this out because I'm not sure if uh, the recruiting is getting any better at the wide receiver position either. So uh, it looks like this passing game, if I was a wide receiver recruit, I would certainly want to play for this one. So uh, I think that's definitely a concern going forward with this program. Blake Corm just don't you know, grow on trees. You're not going to have a Blake Corm running for 17, 1,800 yards and 20 touchdowns every single year. So what does this offense look like in the future with, uh, without a guy like Corm in the backfield? Yesterday, folks, was kind of 56 minutes of misery. Looking back at the stats, watching the Big Ten in 60 again last night, um, and and looking at uh, everything, it was kind of my own takeaways, my own notes from the game yesterday. Michigan went the final 56 minutes and 32 seconds of the game without a touchdown. That's unacceptable. Um, maybe looking forward to Ohio State. Maybe uh, Blake Corm's injury and being out was was too devastating. But he was in there in the first half, and uh, they just didn't get it done. Um it was a boring game. Uh, wish it would have been more of the boring game where Michigan was up by three touchdowns and it was just boring, but it was uh, not fun to watch. These wide receivers, as I mentioned, they're, they're the culprit here. Um, they're not getting open downfield. The routes, the running that are being called and, and drawn up by the coaching staff are bad. Cornelius Johnson had five catches, but they weren't very impactful. I think he had one impactful catch in the, in the second half that I thought really Michigan needed it when it happened. Colson Loveland did as well. Uh, he's emerged. He had a big catch last week. Had a few this week, um, and it seemed like Michigan was, was trying to script plays for him down the stretch, uh, those underneath routes that Luke Schoonmaker and Eric Hall have made their names on as well. Ronnie Bell, all right, he did an okay game, and Isaiah Gash, right, they went to him a few times. He dropped a play that was just almost lost Michigan in the game uh, on their second to last drive. They had to settle for a field goal. Uh, in, in a play which uh, Isaiah Gash was the underneath guy and got a little dump off pass, dropped it. Colson Loveland was right behind him, 10 yards behind him, wide open in the end zone. JG just didn't see him. But Gash did make a play later on the next drive on fourth down. That kept the, uh, the, uh, the drive alive and Michigan's opportunity for a win alive yesterday. All right, make sure you guys, if you're not, follow me on Twitter. It's at James Yoder. My Twitter account has just been blowing up. I went viral like crazy yesterday three or four times. Uh, I was kind of in the... Uh, the Elon Musk, uh, what do we call it? Uh, well, nah, like when, when one of the videos on YouTube um, goes viral, like the jet stream. I was in Elon Musk, uh, Michigan jet stream, with Michigan being the number one Twitter topic, uh, Twitter 2.0 jet stream. I was uh, you know, getting a ton of uh, engagement yesterday. So make sure I'll be tweeting only about Michigan Ohio State this entire week. Um, and I'm going to be making fun of Ohio State uh, quite a bit as well. So make sure you follow me. It's at James Yoder on Twitter. Is this the biggest game in the history of college football, in the history of this program, in the history of this rivalry? College football, probably not. Um, but I certainly think, for me, uh, given the stakes of Michigan coming off a win last year, I think that's key here. Because in 2005, 
2005, 2015, Michigan lost both those years. 2005, Ohio State had a comeback win uh, in Michigan Stadium. And so what this signals to me is it's different than those years is that Michigan has the opportunity to make it a three-year stretch of not losing to Ohio State, didn't play in 2020, and get two straight wins ver, uh, versus Ohio State, which hasn't happened since when? Since 1999 and 2000. That's the last back-to-back -back wins uh, against this program. Ohio State had one more bad year after that in 2001. They retooled. They brought, you know, or, no, I'm sorry, after that loss in 2000, they brought in Jim Trestle. He had an okay year at 01, won the national title the next year. So I think for Michigan, this is the opportunity to break that 22-year uh, non-winning streak in Columbus, win two straight against Ryan Day, uh, make it year four against Day. He's only got one win against Michigan. And then the game is next year. He's in Ann Arbor. Michigan will be having their starting quarterback returning. And I think all the momentum will be in Michigan's side. I think Michigan wins this game, frankly. I think if they win this game next week, they are the preseason number one team going into next year. You might say, oh, you're crazy, Yoder. But am I crazy? Who will be returning the quarterback next year? Michigan. Ohio State won't. LSU. I'm sorry, LSU. Uh, Ohio State won't. LSU might be. Oh, all right, Jack, your boy. Um, Alabama won't. Okay. Uh, Georgia won't. Um, who else won't? Uh, is that, that's pretty much it. Tennessee won't. Hendon Hooker's gone. So who uh, who else would be number one? Maybe USC, right? They'll, they'll have. That's kind of what. Uh, if it's either Alabama's number one, or typically, or it's the team with the best returning quarterback in college football. So I think this game is monumental for the trajectory of this program and the possibility to finally flip the rivalry and uh, have Michigan kind of right on that same footing at Ohio State where we think every single year Michigan should get a win going forward. Go down in the comments, though, if you want to win this game. Yeah, um, I, I do think that, th that the vibes are good. Uh, you put out better vibes. The team feels them. They do better. So comment Bosa, beat Ohio State again as many times as you can. You know, Every time you think about stop commenting down below, do it one more time. It's like an extra rep in the gym, okay, just because you know, the, the program feels it. A lot of players, you might not think they do, but uh, a lot of players watch the show, et cetera. So show them the love. Comment Bosa down in the comments. Can Michigan overcome the injury bug, right? Respect Ohio State. No, they've got talent. No, they've got uh, you know one of the best teams, most talented teams in the country. But our injury is not the biggest uh, you know opponent Michigan has left. Blake Corum, Diamond Edwards, Mike Morris. He'll probably return next week for sure. Offensive line has had six, seven different uh, starting combinations this year, and uh, it's been troubling. I think Ohio State's gone through plenty of injuries themselves, but this might be Michigan's biggest opponent left because if they're without Corum, without Edwards. Offensive lineman Mike Moore said um, this week against Ohio State, it severely obviously impacts their ability to win the game. If Blake Corum is not healthy, if he's not playing at the top of his game, I do think Michigan is going to really struggle to move the ball next week at Ohio State. But uh, that's it. That's where we're at, folks. It's on the game of the century, of the year, of the millennium of all time. Um, we're going to be wall to wall. Uh, tomorrow we'll have a video. We're going to have two uh, video in the morning on Tuesday, and we'll have a two-hour live show on Tuesday night. Have a video for you Wednesday. Have one or two on Thursday. Thanksgiving, you can get, uh, get live with us, loose with us uh, at the Michigan Football Report. We'll have one or two videos out for you on Friday as well, so make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Game of the Century, Michigan, Ohio State, next Saturday in Columbus. Until I see you guys on Monday, go Blue.